All right, welcome back to class, everyone. Um, I'm glad to have every one of you back here again. So we started, um, we kicked off yesterday. Um, we kicked off yesterday with our first session, which was um, it was quite exciting. Uh, we we had a lot of information. We learned a lot, and it was it was basically um, an insightful session, right? So the materials and everything has been um, posted on Google Classroom. So please and please try as much as you can to go through everything that we are dropping, right? It's it's actually for um for your own um um good so as not to miss out on anything. Um the assignment for yesterday's class would be available, made available immediately after this class. Right. So immediately after this class, um check the Google Classroom, you're going to see the assignment there for both yesterday's class and today's class. So as soon as you can, you should start with the assignment, right? So the deadline, as I've said before. The deadline for the assignment is on Thursday by 11.59 p.m. So if if um, um, it exceeds the deadline and you are yet to submit, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do about that. So please, um, that is why I'm sounding it now to everyone. You have um, four days to do the assignment. So please, if you um, find some of the questions challenging, and um, I doubt you would if you um, follow through with this class. You can always go back to the um, live recording and um, and um, clear yourself on any concept that was difficult for you to understand, and then go back to reattempting the assignment. So everything has been put in place to make sure that um, the learning process is seamless, right? So we are doing our best and our on our end and we expect you also to do your own best and put in your best effort. So let me know in the group chat if um, you are all following. All right, let me just get feedback in the group chats um, to be sure that everyone is hearing me loud and clear. All right. Okay, so today we are going to be um, we are actually going to be starting properly today. Yesterday's class was just an introduction, just giving you a heads up on what we are going to be doing in the course of this program, right? But today we are going to be starting. So as you can see, as the title of this chart, we have introduction to Python programming, right? So um, yesterday we talked about so many things, talked about data science, talked about tools in data science, and we talked about Python programming. So everything we're going to be working with basically is going to be with Python from start to finish, right? We won't be using any other tool. So we'll be using Python mostly, and Python is a very, very um, vast programming language. There's a lot of things you can do with it. So today we are going to be I'm going to introduce us to that and look at some of the things and the basic concepts in Python and we'll stop there and continue from where we stop in the subsequent class or in the next class. So but before we go straight to um, the class, I just want to quickly, I just want to quickly um, let us know that the recording for yesterday's class is already available. So um, CareerX has a YouTube channel, if you are not aware already. So we have a YouTube channel where we post all the recordings, all the classes that we have, right? So if you go to the um, channel, you are going to see the recording there. So I posted a link yesterday on the Google Classroom and I as well posted it today on the Telegram group under the Material and Resources um, group, group, right? So following the link, it will take you to directly to the video of yesterday's class. So if you had any issue why um, following the class yesterday, um, let's say you had a bad network or you didn't come on time or something happened and you didn't stay to the end or you didn't even attend the class at all, right? You can always go back to the class recording and um, follow through from start to finish every single thing that was discussed, right? So it's going to help you 
at least follow up with the classes and everything we are doing, right? And sometimes you might not um, grasp some concept immediately in the class. So this live recording will actually help you with that. So you can always go back there, look at what was um, discussed, how it was explained and clarify yourself on that, right? So um, just to let you know about that, in case um, you are still, um, you are not aware. And another thing, I want to urge everyone here to create a folder on their computer. So this is not a, an assignment or whatever, right? It's just for your own organization, just to ensure that you are um, or you you are actually organizing um, the materials and the assignment that you'd be given. So um, I am I'm urging you to create a folder on your desktop or wherever on your system and then name the folder you to drive data science or data science you drive or something that would help you know exactly what the folder is about. And all the materials that I'm going to be dropping, everything, you can always download them and categorize them in that folder. So once you are given an assignment, you have to download the note, the notebook into your, your, your system and then um, um, and do the assignment with your Jupyter notebook. So everything should, be organized so that you will not get them all um it will not be everywhere basically so this is just an, an advice to also help you organize stuff so just try and create that and if you haven't so um yeah that is just those are the two things i need to say before we head um straight to what we have for today so i'll be sharing my screen now and I'm just going to quickly show something. All right, so just give me a minute. All right, so can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? All right, perfect. So we are going to be looking at Python today. Um, we'll be introducing us to the Python programming language. But before we do that, I just want to quickly um, I'm show you how you can set up all this. Although the resource, the video materials has been um, posted on the Google Classroom a few weeks back. So I, I expect everyone to have installed everything and set up your Jupyter notebook because this is what we are going to be working with, right? So but in, for, for the sake of those that might not have um, um, set this thing up, so what you just have to do is just to go to your browser, type in Anaconda, right? So it should take you straight to the Anaconda um, Anaconda website, right? And then you basically download it from here. So um, we don't want to waste much time. That was why we um, we gave you the video beforehand so you can do all that. So um, once you have that downloaded, then um, you would install it as you would any other application, right? So, and um, installing it is actually straightforward. There is no, um, there is it's actually not a complex um, process. So you install it and then you have your Anaconda, right? So I'm just going to share the screen here. Don't want to go through the download process now because of time, but you can always assess it on their website, the the Anaconda software on their website. It's actually free, they don't pay for it. So um, let me quickly show, share the screen. So there are actually two ways um, you can open your Jupyter notebook, right? You can either open it via the Anaconda Navigator itself, 
So this is the anaconda navigator. Once you download the anaconda, this is what you're expected to see, right? And um, Jupyter Notebook should be here, right? Your Jupyter Notebook should be here, right? So you can either have it here inside the navigator, or you can have it as part of your application, as part of your Windows application, right? So once you open the navigator, you see Jupyter Notebook. I, I, I don't know um, this particular, I need to add it to mine here, but I access my own differently. But on your navigator, you should see your Jupyter Notebook here. All your installed applications should actually be displayed here on this home screen. So you can directly launch it, right? You can see we have VS Code, we have other um, applications here, right? So um, it's currently not here in my own, but I'm be rest assured that um, once you install it, you're going to see it. So I, I actually have a different, um, I'm using a different um, Jupyter Notebook for mine. So, but this should be what you see once you install your Jupyter Notebook. You can launch it directly, just click on launch here um get the Jupyter notebook click on launch and to take you directly to the um um Jupyter notebook so that is the first method of accessing or opening Jupyter notebook so the second way of opening Jupyter notebook is basically just accessing it directly from your applications right so let me just quickly show you that show you all right okay so basically um, once you get your application, you just once you um, get on your application screen, you can just type Jupyter Notebook. So you can see it here. It's it's actually appeared um, as the result, um, um, one of the results here. So as long as you have Anaconda installed, you should have your Jupyter Notebook here, right? If you don't, you can go. If you you can also search directly. Just go to your apps page. Right, this is Windows 11, so it depends on the system you're using. If you're using Mac OS, it's still the same thing. Just go to your app list or app drawer and search for Jupyter Notebook. If you're using a, um, a different version of Windows, you can always um, still do the same thing, right? So don't mind the interface here. So you can see we have the Anaconda installed here, right? So you just go to the Anaconda folder. You see all the different um, applications here. And then you can see Jupyter Notebook. So this is this should be the easiest way of accessing Jupyter Notebook directly without opening an account. So you can just come here and just click on it. Once you click on it, it is going to open a terminal for you. So don't um don't bother yourself about what's happening here. You're just trying to create a server that is going to run on. So um it's going to do this and then take you directly to to your browser. Right, so Jupyter Notebook um, runs on your browser, right? So it, it's hosted in your computer and runs on your browser. So the interface is going to be on your web browser, whether you're using Microsoft Edge or you are using um, Chrome or whatever. So I already have it running, right? So I can just come here and you see I have my Jupyter Notebook already set up. So that was why I had this, um, this thing already, year already, right, before class so this is just a simple process of setting up your Jupyter notebook download anaconda install it once you install it you can just either from the anaconda navigator access Jupyter notebook or you search directly from your app drawer and then you would get your Jupyter notebook um, ready to go so once you open your Jupyter notebook then you are all set so what's remaining for you now is start to um, um, to understand how to use it Right, so we are just going to quickly show you the um, the interface and what the um, the different components of the Jupyter notebook and how to um, how to use it for um, for programming basically because this is what we are going to be using throughout the course of this program. So you need to get comfortable with it. Your assignment to also help you know learn how to use it because you will be writing your code on Jupyter notebook and submitting that Jupyter notebook. Um, committing the assignment in a Jupyter Notebook, right? So um, now let's say you've opened your Jupyter Notebook. This is what you should have. You should have a kind of um, directory list here, right? You should have a kind of folder list depending on where you are on your system. So you can see I have my desktop document, download and everything. So 
if you've created your youth drive um, folder, you know where you created it. Let's assume you created it on your desktop. You can just go straight to your desktop, right? Open your desktop here. You're going to see all your folders here. Then go directly to the youth drive folder. And then this is as exactly why I told you to categorize everything. So you can just see everything that you have, your assignment, um, the document that I will be sending and everything. So you can just go to, go there, you can open it and then um, just open the, um, the, the particular notebook. And then it's going to create a different um, tab that will show you or like host the particular content in that notebook. So this is what you're going to be having, right? So um, now you can, I, some of you might be confused at this point that why are we having text here, right? We're having text. I was thinking it's supposed to be code, code, and um, yeah, 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 you're expecting it to contain just code, right? No, so Jupyter Notebook um, can be used, can be used for coding, can be used for writing code, and it can also be used for writing text. That is why it is called a notebook, right? So I'm just going to create a new notebook here so I can demonstrate this. So to create a new notebook, you can just come to file and then click on new and then notebook, right? So it's going to open a fresh notebook for you. So this is when you want to start something afresh. You are not trying to open an existing notebook. So you want to start afresh. So this is what you get. So this is the, the, this is the initial point in using Jupyter Notebook. So now, um, once you open or create a new notebook, you will see something like this, like a rectangular box, right? Um, okay. All right, so you see something like this, like a rectangular box. So this is called a cell, C-E-L, cell. Right, so this is what um, it is called in Jupyter Notebook. It's called a cell. So this is, this cell is where you write all the things that you can write. Right, so this cell can actually be used for two things basically. It can be used to write code, and it can also be used to write text. So if I come here, all these things you are seeing, all these things are text. So um, each of these particular texts are contained um, in a in a particular cell. Is there any issue with the um the the screen or what? Someone said they can't hear me. Um, Okuri, Michael, I think your network is um. Okay. I'll just give me a minute there. All right. Can you see my screen now? Can, can you all see my screen? All right, perfect. So as I was saying, once you open a new Jupyter notebook, um, you are going to, a new Jupyter notebook file, you are going to be, this is what you are going to meet initially, right? You're going to meet an empty rectangular box. box. And this box is where you do all everything you are going to be doing, right? This box would be where you write your code. This box would be where you are going to um, write your text to, depending on what you are doing with the, with the notebook. And you can create multiple boxes, right? So if I want to create a new box, I'll just come here to this plus sign. So let me zoom in. So as you can see here, I'll just come here. This plus sign is for creating a new cell, rather. So I said this rectangular box is called a cell. Right, as I said initially, C E L cell. So we can have multiple cells in our notebook. So this cells is actually a way to categorize different sections of our code. That is what makes Jupyter Notebook beautiful, right? Because we can have an organization to our code. And in data science, it is essential that you have that organization because you want to run some code, right? You want to you want to run just a section of a code before running another section. So you don't want to run every single thing. If you have written programs before, you know that you write programs in a particular um, 
um, um, file, right? So you write you you write all your code and everything, and then you now run that particular file. So everything that is in that file will be executed. So it is not the same thing with Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook allows you to run sections of code, section by section. So it it anything in this box right now is going to be executed, and the remaining boxes here will not be affected. So let's just look at it. So now I can just create a new box by clicking this plus sign. Now, if I click the, click this plus sign here, we see I have another box here. So I have two boxes, right? So I can have um, some code here, right? I can come here and have another um, um, set um, section of code, right? So if I want to run this particular cell, it's going to run without affecting this one, and I will get my output here. You understand? So don't worry, you're going to see everything in action. I'm just trying to introduce you so you can get familiar with this interface. So now this cell um, can be used for two things. It can be used, as I've said, to write codes, and it can also be used to write text. So now as we are, it is um, it has been set up automatically for coding. So if I come here and I just say print, print, hello world. So this is a Python code, you understand? If I execute it, the way to execute it is either to come here, this play sign or play icon and um, run it, right? You can see it gave us this output here. So the output will be displayed outside of the cell, directly below it, you understand? So you can interact with your code as you like, right? You can either use this particular option here, this one, or you can just do control enter. Right. If you put your place your cursor in the cell and um, and click Control Enter, it will automatically run the cell. Right. So the Control Enter runs the cell without creating a new cell. But if I use Shift Enter, Shift Enter will run this cell and automatically create another cell and take my cursor to that next cell. So these are the things you need to know because you'll be doing that almost all the time. You understand? So just try to understand this um, old navigation I'm talking about here because as simple as it might sound, this is basically what you'll be doing most of the time. So you can see currently this is a code cell, right? It has been set up to execute Python codes, right? So if you check um, the right, um, the upper right here, you see that we have Python kernel that is running the particular code. So you don't touch this, you leave it there. Anaconda has done everything for you, so you don't need to set anything up there. So you just come here and write your code. So if you want to write a text, what you will do is you will come to this particular tab here. You see we have code here. Yeah? So just click on this drop down icon, click on it. You will see we have three options. So forget this row. We're not going to be using this row. What I need you to focus on is code and markdown. You understand? Code and markdown. So if it is set on code, that means anything you type in this box would be interpreted as a code, especially to be interpreted as Python code, right? But if you change it to Markdown, then anything that is here will be interpreted as a Markdown. A Markdown is a form of text that can be styled, you understand? So let's just look at that. So if I come here and click Markdown, you understand? So this particular cell, if you if you activate it, you see that it has this blue, um, um, shiny blue glowing border around it. That means you are currently in that particular cell. So if you are out of it, you see that you don't have it again. So these are the things that you need to know about your Jupyter notebook. So once you come here, you see that we have this blue um, border around it. That means you are in that particular cell and you can start typing. So once you are in a cell, just check up here. Oh, this is markdown. So anything I'm right here would be in Markdown. So let me just come here and say, and type, welcome to Jupyter Notebook, right? So this is a text, this is not a code. So if I if I execute it, that is Control Enter, you see that it, it's actually displayed as a text, right? It's actually displayed as a text. And now the fun thing about uh, Markdown or Jupyter Notebook is that you can style your text. So there are different ways of styling your text, which we are not going to go into 
right? So basically, as you are moving forward and, and we are using it, you are going to be learning a lot of things about how to style text and the rest. But the basic ones are just um, headings, creating headings, understand. So if I come here now to the uh, material I have already, so you see that this is the material we'll be using for today. You can see that this text actually styled. You can see it is bold. Um, you can see all these things that are here, right? So basically you can style your text in whatever format you want so that it, it's presented. That's why we call it Jupyter Notebook. It's like a note where you write things. So you can write things and you can also write code, right? So very, very flexible and definitely you would enjoy the experience of using it. Right. So I know some of us might be familiar with using VS Code for coding and everything. But trust me, Jupyter Notebook is more flexible, although you can actually install Jupyter Notebook extension in VS Code and use it there. But um, as beginners, it's essential that you understand Jupyter Notebook itself. So every other thing, um, every other um, adaptation of Jupyter Notebook would be easier for you to adopt. So, so basically, this is it about Jupyter Notebook, right? If you want to delete a cell, you can just click on the cell. You see this blue border will come up and you come here, this sign here, cut it, or you come here, this delete button, delete it, right? So there are a lot of things that we can do here. So let me just quickly show you how you can um, style your text. So um, if you want this to be an heading, a heading rather, you can just put this hashtag. So hashtag here is going to um, automatically style this text as a heading. Understand? So one hashtag here means the highest level or the highest level of heading. If you've done HTML before, you know we have H1, H2, H3, H4, and the rest. So this um, hashtag is like H1. So if I run this with Control Enter, you see that this the text is big now because we actually um, um, use the hashtag um, sign, which styles it as a heading. You understand? But if we come here and add another hashtag, right, it is going to reduce it. You understand? So basically, you get the gist now. So we have three. You get three um, lower heading. You have four. You get the, the um, you, you understand where we are going. So if you want, maybe you want to create a, um, a heading, you can actually use this hashtag to do that instead of just writing your text plainly here. So that, that is basically how you do that. Um, you can also bold your text. So bolding of text is done by using your asterisk. So you put double asterisk at the beginning and put double asterisk at the end. You understand? Run that. You're going to see that we have a bold um, um, text now. You can see that it is bold, right? So this is these are the things that you can do with Jupyter um, with Mark um, in Markdown. So this is called Markdown, right? So Markdown is actually a, a, a kind of text format that can be styled. You can use different styles on your text. So it's not just plain text. So this is just what it means, right? Um, so we can also create, let's say you want to create a list of something. You can come here, enter, and just use your um, your iPhin, right? So use your iPhin and then say first, Right, automatically Jupyter Notebook will know that you want to create a list. So you come here and say second, enter, third, enter, fourth, right? So this is a list. So if I put enter, you can see that we've basically put a list here. So it automatically um, gave you bullets for your different list. So you can see we have your heading, you have your list and so on and so forth. So these are the things you can do. You can just, let's say you want to explain um, some of them you can just type, okay, this is the first item in the what list. So this is just how it is. If you want to bold this first, you can come here and bold it and just put your asterisks and then you have that. If you want to italicize it, it's very simple. Just come here and put one asterisk, put one asterisk. It, you vitalize it already, you understand? So that is actually that. So um, well, this is not a markdown class, right? You can actually, um, I'll send you a reference a material to show you the different things you can do. Um, 
in a markdown. So that's it. That's just it for markdown. So you can see that these are the two basic things we'll be doing in our Jupyter Notebook. We can use it for writing text and we can use it for writing our code. So um, that, that is actually it for that. So in case you see um, some of the things I'll be doing, you don't get confused. So, so we're going to have this. Let's just have a new notebook. All right. So now let's go straight to what we have for today. So this is the second session. Hope everyone is still following. Hope everyone is still following. You can hear me loud and clear. All right. Okay, great. So um, today I'll be introducing us to Python programming language. So today's class will just be for um, Python introduction. We're going to do this little code definitely, but it's just going to be the introductory aspect, right? So um, this is the outline, right? We have overview of Python, talk about um, the importance and application of Python. We also talk about the syntax and indentation, talk about variables and data types, we talk about type conversion, print statement, comment, and doc strings. So this is where we're going to be stopping for today. Yeah, um, we're going to be stopping at comments and doc strings and um, next week we'll continue from the um, next um, 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 outline um item on the outline which is basic arithmetic operations so uh, after the end of this class you should actually understand what python is and you just have an idea of what what um the programming language uh um, um does right so when you see the python code you should know that oh this is a python code we're going to talk about how to do all that how to know when um, um how to write your python code the syntax to follow and all that so let's just um um forge ahead because of time so now what is python right um first off like if this is your first time of hearing python um i i actually want would understand you if you find the name to be weird right like why would someone name a programming language python like why <laughs> exactly so but that shouldn't be the 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 point of all your focus at this point just know that python is a general purpose programming language very important to know that python is what a general purpose programming language so we have programming languages that are specific for a particular purpose you understand so programming languages were created for a specific purpose, right? Like JavaScript now, um, I don't really know much about it, but I believe JavaScript was specifically created for web development. So you can actually classify it as a, you can, you can classify it as a general purpose programming language, right? Because it's mostly used for web development, right? You have uh, programming languages like R, right r is another programming language that we talked about the other time it's it's actually it was actually specifically created for statistical analysis but it, it has come to adopt some other libraries that is making it more flexible and versatile right? but these programming languages they were actually created with a purpose in mind but python is different python is a general purpose there was actually no specific purpose for creating python Right, so that is why we are classified under the category of being general. So it can be used for a lot of things, you understand? So just keep that at the back of your mind. Now, general purpose is one thing. It is also a high level interpreted programming language, right? So these things are computer science stuff that um, we might not really have the time to dissect, but basically um, programming itself is speaking to your computer. When you write a program, what you are trying to do, you are trying to communicate with your computer. You're trying to tell your computer to do a particular thing. You understand? So these programming languages that we are learning, they are like normal languages, right? When you want to speak with somebody that is 
um, that is in France that speaks French. We need to learn their language. You understand? We need to learn how to speak French. If not, they won't understand us. And if we are trying to tell them to do something, they will not be able to do that thing. You understand? So the same way human language work is the same way programming languages work. So at, um, um, yeah, the same thing applies. If you are trying to tell the computer something and we don't know how to code, basically we will not be able to achieve our purpose. The computer won't understand you. Or even if you know how to, you have an understanding of that programming language, but you don't know how to accurately write your code, you are going to be getting errors, errors, errors. Errors is the same thing as someone telling you that they don't understand what you are saying. Um, please, can you talk, come again? All those kind of feedbacks, you understand? So your computer is actually more strict with that feedback. It just throws you error, you understand? So programming is basically speaking with computer. And to be a good programmer, you need to be able to speak um, effectively with your computer. So that is what we are going to be learning, how to just um, 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 instruct the computer to do some certain things. So Python is one of those languages that we are, would be using to speak to our computer. So the high level in this case is that um, it is we have different levels of um, programming languages. We have low level programming language. I believe they taught, they taught us this in our computer class where we talk about machine language and assembly languages. So the computer understands ones and zeros. So if you want to actually directly speak to the computer, we are going to be writing ones and zeros to the computer, which doesn't make sense and which is not very practical, you understand? In the initial um, stages of computer, um, development. People were actually using binary codes, machine languages, to speak to the computer because the instructions there were not actually um, complex, right? But as we're pro um, progressing with innovation and everything, they needed to bring or develop languages that can that can capture more complex um, computations, right? So they developed all these program languages that we have today. So Python now is a high level. So the high level means that it is on a higher level. So once you write a Python code, that is not what the computer is understanding directly. That code is actually broken down or interpreted as we are going to, as we have it here. So it is interpreted into a machine code, right? So Python is actually, um, um, it has what we call um, a compiler, basically. So the, com I, the compiler takes your code that you're writing and transform it into binary languages, ones and zeros, and then your computer understands it. So that is basically what this sentence is trying to say, right? So we won't actually go deep into that. This is not a computer class, right? So this is basically what Python is. a general purpose, high level interpreted programming language known for its clear syntax. Now, um, if you've not written code before, if you've not seen code before, you, you might not necessarily understand this right now, but just know that Python has a very clear syntax. What does syntax mean, right? Syntax is actually the structure of writing something, the way something is being written. English language has its own syntax. You understand? We have um, we know how to write our our sentences, right? We know that we'll start with a capital letter, right? A capital letter, and then we write the first word. Then we go like that, go like that. Whenever we have pauses, we'll put comma. That is part of the syntax. We'll continue. And then when we have ended the sentence, we are going to do what? We are going to put full stop. So that is English syntax. You understand? So we have um, the paragraph. So once you are done with a particular paragraph, you know that you leave an indent or an indentation that is a space before starting your next paragraph. So those, those things are actually the syntax of English language. So the same thing applies to other languages. They have their own separate syntax, like Arabic now. Arabic now has its own syntax, right? I don't really know much about it, but the way you write it is different from the way you write English language. Why? Because of the syntax, you understand? So the same way normal languages have syntaxes that they follow, Python also has its own syntax. Other programming languages have their syntax. JavaScript has its syntax. C++, Rust, and, and what have you, they have their own syntax. But Python syntax is actually very clear. That is one beautiful thing about Python. Python syntax is simple. It is one of the simplest syntax 
that you can see or get in any programming language just keep that at the back of your mind you understand so you 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 see all these things as we are proceeding right so python is known for clear syntax readability and versatility so readability of course if you have something that has a clear syntax to be easy to read right so i don't need to explain much about that and versatility too so it is versatile right for the fact that it's a general purpose programming language that means you can adapt it to so many things right so many applications so this is just what we need to know about python at this point right we won't go deep into that right so this is the knowledge you need to move forward so all this other information here yeah, just telling you when when it was developed so python was developed by Gudio van rossum in 1991 so that is um, um about 30 years more than 30 years ago so since then it has been adopted widely and actually one of the most popular programming languages in the world right so um so basically this is what python is all about now um so we can actually go further if you care to read about python itself from the website so if you get this notebook, you can easily just click on this link that we have here. So you see, this is actually um, a markdown. I was able to create a link with it, you understand? So let me, if I want to see the syntax that I use for that markdown, I can just double click it and you'll see what I did here, right? So this is part of the markdown that I was talking about the other time. So you get to just, you can explore it. Once you get this notebook, you can actually explore it and just see how it can be done. So I don't want to um, spend so much time on that. So if you click on this link, it's going to take you to Python website itself, right? So you are going to the Python website. You are going to see the documentation. So you can basically um, check out anything here, right? So you can see the um, tutorial, library reference, language reference. Just explore your own, right? Basically, there is no guide on what to do at this point. You can see we have beginner's guide here. So if you are a beginner, you can just click on this and then it will take you to um, a page where it shows you everything about Python, right? So there are a lot of things. I think the CSS is not rendering here well. So yeah, that is, okay, this, as you can see, this is it here. You can see everything, right? So all the things you need to know. So that is it for Python. I believe you've been able to get an understanding of what Python is. So now, as I said before, Python is a general purpose programming language. So it has a wide array of application. It can be used in web development, data analysis and visualization, machine learning and artificial intelligence, scientific and numerical computing, software development, automation and scripting, and education, right? So I'm just going to quickly go over this one after the other. So um, you can use Python for web development. So if, you're aware, if you want to learn web development, you can actually also use Python, right? So you can use um, libraries in Python like Django, Flask, FastAPI, and some other libraries. So these are the most popular one. You can use it to build your backend, right? Your, do the backend of your website, which can be done with other programming languages, but Python also can do that. It's that versatile. And most people do it. Most of these big um, websites that you know, they were actually built using Python or using Django to be specific. So that's about web development, data analysis and visualization. Yes, that's what we're going to be doing. So Python can be used for data analysis and visualization. So this, the libraries we mentioned yesterday are what we are going to be using for that. Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, right? So these are the libraries you can use for data analysis and visualization in Python, right? So you can also do machine learning and artificial intelligence. So yeah, Python is like, once, when you are, once you're talking about machine learning, just know you're talking about Python. There is basically no other programming language that comes to mind when doing machine learning. So you need to learn Python, you need to know Python to do machine learning, right? So I've talked about the libraries that you can use for that. You can use scikit-learn, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. Those are the libraries that in Python that you can use for machine learning. We also have scientific and numerical computing. So if you are, let's say you're a rocket scientist, you're working in NASA. NASA, they use Python too for that calculation, right? So if you want to have a very precise calculation, calculating orbit stuff and all those things, you can actually use Python for that, right? Software development, the same thing as web development, 
right? So automation and scripting, right? So if you want to create, um, someone asked me yesterday if, um, if creating trading bots can is is affiliated with data science, all right? It actually isn't affiliated with data science, but it's affiliated with Python. So Python can be used to create all these bots you're talking about. So that is what automation is. So you can create bots that automate processes, right? And scripts to, to do a lot of things. If you're into cybersecurity, you would also be learning how to use Python to create scripts and do a lot of stuff. So Python is very versatile. You can do a lot, like you can do a lot basically with it. And the last is education. So why you're seeing education here is that Python is basically used to introduce people to programming because of how simple it is. You understand, right? How simple it is. So um, as you said, as I said before, it has a clear syntax and that clear syntax gives it that edge, right? So these are the um, different applications of Python. The one we are going to be focusing on in this program is data analysis and visualization and machine learning, right? So we are going to be focusing on this aspect of Python Right, so that's what we're going to be doing for the next 12 weeks. So let's move on to the main thing. So I've introduced us to Python, right? Giving an idea of what Python is, what, what it does and um, the application and what have you. So now we are going to be looking at Python itself. So the first thing they teach you in any language is the syntax, how to write that language, right? When you are learning how to write, you learn the syntax. So that's what we're going to do today. So, but Python syntax is straightforward. Remember, um, I, I wrote a particular code while I was making an illustration, print what hello world, that is a Python code. You've written a code already. You've actually written a program, right? So that is, it can be as simple as that. So now Python is actually renowned for its straightforward syntax, as I have said multiple times. Let me, um, Zoom in so you can see this more clearly. All right. So, and it has a strong emphasis on readability, right? Which sets it apart from many other programming languages. So by now you should already know this because I've said this like a million times, right? Python syntax is clear, it's straightforward, is this, is that, is um it has emphasis on readability and the rest, right? So you should already know that about Python at this point. So yeah, let's now see how to um, write Python code. So now, one thing about the most important thing or the unique thing about Python syntax is the indentation. The indentation. That, that's what we're going to talk about as regards Python syntax. So by i think i believe everybody knows what indentation is right so we know what in, um you writing our normal english we know how to use indentation so indentation is basically spaces so to indent something mean to um give space or to make space before starting what you want to write so if i'm to like let's say if i'm to like let, um, write something and I'm asked to um, give an indentation. So I would have to actually jump some few, um, 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 I'll have to actually create space depending on how much space I want to create and then start writing. So now Python um, does that with its indentation. So if you don't indent properly, you are going to be getting an error when writing your code. Do you understand? So. Um, Python syntax, what does the syntax actually mean? It refers to the set of rules that define how a Python program is written and interpreted. So as I said before, if you don't write your code very well, you always get an error. That error basically is the computer telling you that, hey, bro, I don't get what you are writing. Can you um, go check your code again and ensure that you are sending me the correct information following the syntax, uh, following Python syntax? But even if you you are a good programmer, sometimes you know what to code. You already have it in your head, but then you didn't follow the syntax. You made a very silly mistake, a slight, a slight mistake. It will still throw an error because you've not followed that rule, the syntax. So it's very common. And don't get frustrated when you are writing your codes and you are getting error. 
He just pointing you at something. It might be as it might be seem as simple as you not put a bracket, you not cover something, or you not put a quote, or you not do this, or you not do that, right? So these are the things that you need to get comfortable with as you are progressing, right? So um, this syntax, that set of rules that define how Python program is written and interpreted, right? So um, the way you learn how to write Python code effectively is by practicing. So I'm, I'm going to always emphasize that moving forward by practicing. If you don't practice, then you would not know. You might have it in your head, okay, this is how it should be. But is it different from, from writing it, right? Head knowledge is different from um, practical knowledge or implementation. So there's what we call conceptual, um, um, the, the conceptual aspect of learning and the implementation aspect of learning. What we are doing now is the conceptual aspect. I'm explaining these things to you so you understand exactly what to do, right? This explanation is a means to an end. The end is that you write Python code. So if you stop here and you just relax, right? Assuming that you already know Python, my dear, you don't, right? Until you're able to implement this in code and do that effectively and consistently, then you are now, you cannot say that yes you can write python code so just also keep that at the back of your mind so trust me the back of your mind will get full because <laughs> there's a, there are a lot of things that will tell you to keep at the back of your mind All right so that is just on a lighter note all right so let's move on now the indentation is actually the core aspect of python syntax right so it refers to the use of white space so white space whenever you hear white space is basically just space like People like complicating stuff. These guys that name this thing, they just like com what the white space is space, you understand? So don't allow it to confuse you. So it, is, it refers to the use of white space, which can be done using tabs or spaces, you understand? So um, don't worry, we're going to show you these things in practice, right? This is, we're just trying to, to lay a foundation here, right? So it refers to the use of white space at the beginning of a line define the level of nesting and scope of block of of it and scope of a block of code right so all these things right are just grammar right basically what i'm trying to say here is that what i'm trying to say is that indentation is done by using spaces or tabs to create white spaces so your python interpreter actually looks at those white space and interprets it if it is not there or if it is not properly aligned, it's going to give you an error, right? So that is something you need to know in Python. So don't worry, I'm going to show you an example of that. So um, indentation is the leading white space before any statement, same thing we've said. So now what are, what are the purpose of indentation? What are the, um, what are, why, why do we use in, indentation? So we use indentation to improve readability. So if we don't put indentation, if we don't indent our code, everything will just be jam-packed, right? Everything will just be there. Like it, you might not be able to categorize the code in your head and understand it, right? But indentation will help you separate the different parts of your code block so you can understand the structure. So another thing to take note of, this is not here in this notebook, so take note of it. Indentation is used when you have a block of code not when you are writing a single line. So when you're writing a single line of code, you don't need to indent anything. You don't need to put any space, any white space or black space. You just need, you, you don't need indentation basically. It's when you're having more than a line of code that you now use indentation, especially when you're writing a block of code, right? So now, for example, Okay, I was talking about the purposes of um, indentation. I said the first one is improves the ability, and the second one is helps in indicating block of code. So now we're going to look at what that means. So this is a simple example to illustrate Python syntax for defining a function. So um, we're going to talk about function in our subsequent classes, but this is just an example of how to use indentation. So now I'm going to quickly go to our um, example sheet here. I just did that quickly. Let me close all this that we have here. So now I have we're in our Jupyter notebook, right? Um, I want to quickly show you what I've been saying since. So, right, I I I wrote the code earlier, which is print, right? Hello, 
world. So this is a code, right? This is a very simple and straightforward code in Python. We're going to talk about how to do this, but just follow me here. So if you run this, I'm going to get um, a hello word. No need for indentation here. Understand? So because I've been saying indentation, I mean, since doesn't mean every code you write, you put indentation, no. So it is in cases where you have a block of code. A block of code now can be a function, right? We're going to talk about functions in later class. I'm just using this to show you how to use indentation in Python or the importance of indentation. So writing a function in Python can just be say def my function, right? You can just put any tag and come here. And now this function code is a block of code, right? Why? Because you have to um, continue with the code in the next line. It's not something you just write in one line and you, you finish with it. It has to, you have to continue with it because you are trying to define a function. So it carries um, um, other codes. Um, um, it, there, there are other codes that follow it. So to organize this code, you have to use indentation. And the good thing about Jupyter Notebook is that it automatically indents for you. So once you come here, and write your function definition, and you click enter, you can see that it has indented. So there's a space here between here and here, right? You can see the space here. Let me zoom in. So you can see, let me come back. You can see that there's a space in between this cursor here and there's a space here and here. So this is the indentation we are talking about. So I can just come here and say um, um, pass, right? And just enter. Can see it's fine, no problem. But let's remove this indentation now. You see, um, let me write the normal code for us here. Yeah? Let's see. Print two plus two. So this is our function here, right? If I come here and um, define our function, I this is not function class but let me to show you um what we are what we mean by indentation from here so you can see that our function now is giving us an output right so python is recognizing all the syntax we've put here oh everything is correct this guy has actually followed the syntax rule okay i'm going to execute this code properly so it will print two plus two for us and it will give us four but let's assume we didn't follow the syntax. Okay, let's just start with something. Let's remove one of these brackets, right? Let me remove this bracket here. Someone can see my screen. Is it just him or is it everybody? Is this a general issue or just one person? Let me know. Thing is just all right, all right, just perfect. Okay, so now um, I had this before, so let's just go back. We had this here. So let's assume I made a mistake. I forgot to put, close my brackets here. You understand? I've defied or I've, uh, I've, I've gone against the syntax rule in Python in creating a function. So if I run this, you can see that we would have an error. We'd have an error here. Yeah, the error is telling us that um, invalid syntax, right? And it's pointing at that particular place. Oh, probably you didn't close your bracket. You come here. It's trying to tell you that you, it doesn't understand what you are writing here, right? Giving you an error. So if you put it back, you run it. So let's remove this um, double quote. Remove that. Run it. It'll give us an error. Syntax error. You can see the name of the error here is what? Syntax error. So when you don't follow the syntax of Python, the error name is usually syntax error, right? So let's continue with that. Now let's check out this other one. Now you can see what we are talking about as regards the indentation. So we do not use any indentation here. We just went straight. We just carry our next block of code and and we, we just we, we, we wrote the code without putting any indentation. So Python would not understand this, you understand, right? Because it is seeing this pre and um, this particular function definition as a starting point and is expecting other 
code to follow it using an indent. But now we didn't specify that. So it will give us an error. And the name of the error is indentation error. Can you understand? So when you see indentation error, you know that, oh, I, I am not properly indenting my Python code. So you can see the explanation here, expected and indented block after function definition. So these are the things that you should know when writing Python code. You need to follow the syntax. Very, very, very important, right? So now another thing I'm going to tell you about indentation is that you can actually have one indentation, two indentation, three or four. So basically those, those are just spaces, right? But um, generally, we use four spaces to ensure consistency, right? So you have to stick with using four spaces to ensure consistency. That is what the Python community uses for their for in their Python code. But if you use anything less than that, Python will not penalize you. You won't get any error. So for instance, now I come here, I use just one white space, right? If I run my code, it's running. Good and fine if I run this function. It will give me my value, right? So if I make it two white space, white spaces, four white spaces, they give me the same thing. So, but by convention, you are supposed to use four white spaces. That is four spaces actually, not white spaces. Four spaces by using your the space um, key on your keyboard. One, two, three, four. Or you use tab. Tab is we just um, give you that four spaces at the same time. So that is what we have here as regards indentation. So this is just um, the implementation of um, indentation um, in Python. So just just um, keep that at the back of your mind. I think this is actually very straightforward. So you shouldn't have any issue with that. So let's just move on because we are still have a lot to do today. So indentation improves readability. It also helps in getting block of code. So we've given you an example here, like there are syntax to follow. So don't get overwhelmed by what I'm saying here. You don't need to know everything at this point. Like, trust me, sometimes uh, when I write code, I still get errors, like, and very, very silly errors. Just, I think maybe I didn't close brackets or I didn't do something. Like, it happens, you understand? So computer can be very brutal in, 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 in specifying your errors. So just understand that it's by, by, it's by practicing and by doing it often that you learn how to write these things um, without having much issue. So as you're moving forward, you'll be getting less lesser errors as, as, as you're actually um, progressing with your programming journey or your um, Python journey. So that is it for indentation and syntax. So um, we covered indentation here basically because this is what is unique to Python, right? But as we are moving forward, we are going to be introducing a lot of other syntax, right? As we are moving um, um, into what we have here, variable and data types, we are going to introduce you to a new syntax, right? As we are moving to new libraries in subsequent classes, you are going to see newer syntax, right? These are the things, about, this, this is one thing about programming, you continually learn. So you learn new things every time. So you cannot, you cannot actually learn every single thing in Python. So just get that thing that is necessary, know what you need to know for this, and then, improve yourself on it, practice and keep on improving, right? So that is just basically how you get good with what you are doing, especially data science here. So what we have here today is variables and data type. So this is a fundamental concept in Python, variables and data types. So I'm going to quickly explain what this is and then we'll proceed to the implementation in Python. So what are variables? Now, I'm going to quickly explain that. But before I explain that, I will explain what data types are, right? So data types are actually, um, the, we have different kinds of data types in Python. So variables and data type, they go hand in hand. Variable are containers. So let me start with variables. Variables are containers that hold different data in Python, right? So we have data, right? because everything you are doing, you have, you have to use data, right? We are not talking about um, the data we talked about yesterday, which is the CSV data or all those kind of data. This data now is just the, the small, small data we will use in doing some certain things while writing our code, which you are going to see as we're moving on. But variables and data type 
actually go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. So variables are like container and data, data are the things that you manipulate to get what you want in Python. So just look at variable as a bag, right? It's going to make sense when I show you the implementation, but just follow me here. Look at variable as a bag, right? Let's assume you have um, several items that you want to carry around. You have your keys, you have your phone, you have your perfume, you have a lot of things. Let's say you are traveling or you are just going, um, you are going somewhere basically, and you have all these items, right, that you actually want to carry around. So, you know, as a human being, it will actually be very hectic carrying all these things in your hand one by one. It won't actually make sense. That is why we have bags. So we have our bag, handbag, or whatever bag it is you want to, you want to, you, you like. Then you put all these items in that bag, and the bag makes it easy to transport these items from one point to another. So variable in Python is like that bag. So it's like a container that contains different data. So you can you can assign a data or you can put different data in a variable and carry that variable around to where you want to, where you want it. And any place you get, you can just call that variable and that variable will, will show you the data that is in it. And you can now assess it and do whatever it is you want to do. So when you get to your office, you can just bring out your bag and then bring out your key, bring out your laptop, bring out whatever it is you want to use. So the same thing as variable, when you get to a particular point in your code that you want to use those data inside your variable, you can now call that, bring that variable and then bring out the different data that you have in it. So that is basically what these two things mean, right? So let's just look at what we have here. So variables are used to store data that can be manipulated throughout your program. You understand? So the data is what we are going to be working with, like this, we are going to look at that. And now the data here are of different types. We have different types of data in Python. So don't worry, we're going to show that, but let me just quickly go over that. So we have int, which is integer. We have float, which is floating numbers. We have string, we have boolean, we have list, we have tuple, we have dictionary, we have, and we have set. So these are the fundamental data types in Python. So anything you are doing in Python fundamentally without any external library would be either of these data types we've just mentioned now, right? So these are the basic data types we have in Python. So now what is an integer? An integer basically is your number. Is a number that doesn't have decimal. That's that just what an integer is. It's a whole number, right? Remember your math class. What of float? A float is what? A decimal number. You can see it has points here. Right, so it's, it's used to carry decimal numbers. So once you have points, just know that data is a float. What of strings? Strings are basically text, but in Python, technically, string in Python is anything that is surrounded by quotes. You can see we have these two quotes here. Let me zoom in. We have, see this hello world here now. We have two quotes surrounding it at the beginning and at the end, right? So this is what a string is. So you can have anything in between the quotes, as long as there's a quote at the beginning and at the end, that data type is what a string. So what we can have here, we can have numbers here. It will still be a string, why? Because it has been covered by a string or by strings, um, sorry, by quotes, right? That is what string is. I'm going to show you how to do all these things, don't worry. We have also, we have Boolean. We also have Boolean. Boolean is basically um, a data type that represents or that can carry true or false. So whenever you have anything in Python that has to do with true or false, just know that that data type is a Boolean data type, right? So we can see it here. This is false. We can have true here, right? So basically, this is what a Boolean is. We have list. A list is... Um, a collection of items, right? It has a syntax, right? The syntax is what it starts with what an open bracket and it ends with um, a closing bracket. So um, now you are seeing we are introducing new syntax, right? You can see we introduced this quote, right? Now we are introducing um, brackets now. 
So these are the new new syntax we are going to be introducing as we are, as we are moving on. So just be noting them. So this is what a list is. A list is basically a list. You know what a list is? A list of something. So a list in Python is an ordered collection of items. So you can have any any data type inside here. You can have um, um, integer data types. You can have floats. You can have string. You can have a mixture of all of them inside a list. Understand? We have a tuple. A tuple is like a list, right? We are going to look at the difference, but it starts with um, a normal bracket. A list starts with a square bracket, why a tuple starts with a normal bracket. So this, that is a difference between a list and a tuple. That is one difference, actually. Um, we have other differences that we're going to talk about. We have a dictionary. A dictionary is um, another data type that carries an, a list of items, but in a different way. You can see that it starts with a coily bracket. Now we've seen that we have three different methods of starting any of these um, sequences. We have the first one, list, square bracket, second one, tupu, normal bracket, third one, dictionary, square, sorry, coily bracket. So a dictionary now. Now we're going to look at the dictionary and the set. Both of, you can see that both of them start with the same type of bracket, coily bracket, but a dictionary actually carries what we call key value pair. So one item in the dictionary is, 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 um, contains what we call a key, which is the name or whatever it is you want to have there, and the value. So this is one item. This name and John is one item. Age and 30 is another item, and so on and so forth. So we are going to build on this. Don't worry. You are going to understand how to use it better. And once I, when I give you the assignment, it's going to help you practice this and understand it uh, much better. So we also have a set. A set is different in the sense that it does not um, carry key value pairs. It's just like a normal list as we have a um, tuple and list as we have a ball. It has different um, characteristics that makes it unique, right? So it starts also starts with the coily brackets here. So, we're going to quickly look at all these things and how to do them in Python. So let's um, just um, come here. So what did I say? I talked about variables, right? Variables. So now, how do you define variable in Python? Variables are defined by just giving it any name. So I can just come here and say my variable. But you need to know some things. First of all, you don't have you don't give space in naming your variable or naming anything in Python. You don't give space. So you usually put um, um, this underscore there, or you you use underscore mostly, right? So you don't give um, space in creating a variable. So let's say I want to create a variable that carries a an integer value. So I can come here and say 34. So what I just did now is that I have carried, assigned this integer. This is an integer value here, yeah, remember? I've assigned it to a variable. The same way I will carry my key or my phone and put inside my bag. That is what I just did now. I just carried 34 and put it inside my variable. So anywhere I come, if I run this, right, that is control and enter. If I come here, I can just say call my variable, which is my variable. If I run it, what am I going to get? Can can someone answer me in the in the in the group? What exactly will be the output here to know if we are following? Exactly. So very, very simple. So you are going to get 34. So 34 is what the variable is carrying. So if I run this, you see I'm getting what 34 here. So that is what a variable is. Very, very simple. So I can have anything. I can have um, um, a float. You can see I've changed this now uh, to what? 0.76. So if I run this and come here and run this, what? You see I've gotten a different value, right? I can have a list passed to my variable. I can come here and say um, list. I can say one. Okay, let me use into. 34, 
So I, I'm having a list of integer values, right? So this is a list data type. And I'm assigning this list to a variable, which is my variable. So I can change this name to anything I like. I can change it to um, list. I can change it to my list, right? If I run that, if I come here and say my list, you'll see that I have my list here. The output is showing here, right? So that is what the variable is. So anywhere I am in my code, wherever I'm doing, if I can, if I just call my list, it will bring out the data that it is carrying. That is just what the variable is. So you can assign any of the um, variable, any of the data type you have learned to a variable. So this equal to sign is what we use to assign um, this list to a variable. This is what we call assignment operator. Assignment operator. Very important to know. So let's just move forward. Um, we are going to be giving other examples. So now let's look at some of these um, data types we've talked about. Now we've talked about some types of data here. Yeah, we've talked about um, integer, float, string, boolean list, tuple, dig, sect, right? So now, okay, let's quickly illustrate some of this. So I've showed you how to assign, create a variable. Now let's quickly look at these different um, data types. I'm going to introduce us to some things now. Remember, I've used print initially. So print is a function in Python. Now, we are, today we are not talking about functions, right? We, are, we have a class dedicated to explaining what functions are. But this is very necessary to, to explain because we're going to be using it over the course of this class. So print is a function in Python, right, that actually outputs the content that you pass into it. You understand? So if I come here and say print, normally functions have a closing and opening and closing bracket. This is the syntax of any function. So if I come here and say print, and I say hello world, what is the name of what is the name of this data? Like what data type is this particular data that we have here now inside this print statement? So I just want to ensure that we we are still following. What what data type is this? Hello world here. Yeah. What data type? Based on what we've talked already, it's a string, right? Exactly. So that that is a string. Why why is it a string? Why can someone tell me why is it a string? Why exactly is it a string? No, exactly. Not just because it's textual data, it is because of the code. That is very important to know. It is not just because it's textual data, it's because of the code. Okay, let's look at this thing now. To know the kind of data you're working with. So let me just show you this. If you print hello word, you're going to get the output here. But normally, if you just type hello word, you still get the output regardless. But don't worry, as we're moving forward, you understand the importance of using this print statement. So there's another function that we call type. This is another function that I'm introducing you to. So this is the second function that I'm introducing you to in this program. We have user-defined function, the one you can define yourself, and we have built-in functions in Python. So these things are built-in functions. So type function now, what it does is that it tells you the data type of an object. You understand? So we've created, remember we've created um, a list here, a list for a variable here. Yeah? So if we come here and say type, and we put that variable there, and we say my list, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get lists. Do you understand? You see, we're going to get lists. It means that the object is a list. So this type function tells us the data type of our object. So if I come here and put 45, what am I going to get? I'm going to get int. This object is what? An integer. Do you understand? If I come here and put 45.67, I'm going to get a float, right? Because it's a float. So this is a way to know the kind of um, data you are working with. Do you understand? So now let's look at string, right? So a string starts with a quote. 
and we can have um, let's say Python as the text there. Close it. You can see that it's a string. All right, let's change the text inside here to number. Let's change it to sixty-seven. I'm still going to get a string. Why? Of course, the content here is a number, but for the fact that it is surrounded by quotes, it automatically makes it a string. Do you understand? That is very important to know. And another thing you need to know about string is that you can either have this double quote or single quote string. So it can either be single quotes. So this is a single quote string now. You can see it just has one quote. If I do that, it's going to give me the same thing. Or what? Double quotes. So anyone you want to, you just ensure that there is quotes in your string. There's You have quotation marks surrounding that particular object. So that is for string. So if I come here and... Um, so let me just quickly create um, different data types here. All right, so... Let me come here. Let me create my int. I'll say 45. My floats. My string. Let's see Python. I'll come here and say my list to my tuple. I'll just bring this thing there. Right. Come and say my tuple. I'll say my dicts. So I'll come and say our name Emmanuel. Right, and I'll say um, country, Nigeria. So these are the different, okay, we have sets, my sets. So we have um, this here. So these are the different data types we we've, we've looked at: integer, float, string, list, to put dict, and set. Right. So if I run this, I can now just come here and say type, and I'll say type my int. Right. It will give me integer. Now, if I come here in the same cell and I say type my float. You're going to see that it will not show me this one again. It's just going to show me the last one here, right? Float. That is how this Jupyter notebook works, right? So for you to see everything here, you have to use print. So I'll come up here and say print, type my string, and come here and say print, type my You can now see. So the print function gives you a detailed um, um, output. So you can see that the first object here is an int. The second object here is a class of float. So if I do this for everything, I'll just print out everything here. Come and say print and um, I'll change this to my list or string rather. My my um, lists, my tuple, no, yeah, my tuple, my dips, and what we have the last one. We have the last one, my set. So if I run all this, you see that it will print out everything for us. That is what this print statement does. You understand? So you can see the output here. So each of these variables that we passed in here, we are we pass in a variable to this type function, which will give us the type, and then it will now pass it to this print. So this print will just output it for us to see, right? If we don't put print here, 
we are not going to see anything. We are just going to see the last code that we have here, the output of the last code. That is how this cell, this Jupyter notebook works. So in order to see what you are doing, you have to use print to output it. If you've done Jupyter, um, JavaScript before, it's similar to console.log, you understand? So that is it for um, the type and the, um, the print functions and also the different data types we have, right? So I believe we are still following um, um, we are still following the class. So please just give me a reaction or a feedback or anything to indicate that you are still following, are still following us and um, you're understanding what we've been saying so far. All right, perfect. So let's move on, let's move on. So we still have quite some things to cover. So we have what we call mutable and immutable data types. Now, these different data types I've explained now, they are categorized under mutab in Im immutability or mutability. And what does mutability and immutability mean, right? So I'm just giving you a minute here. Um, okay. Okay, great. So we have mutability and immutability. So these different data types we have here, they are either mutable or immutable. So mutability means they can be changed after they have been created. Immutability means they cannot be changed even after they have been created. Do you understand? So you can see here that, okay, the value cannot change once created for immutable data types. So if you try to change it, a new object is created instead, right? So the ones under um, um, these are the integer objects, float object, string object, and tuple. So once you create an integer, float, string, and tuple, you can't actually change it. Understand? What do you mean by that? Let's just come here. We've created this, this um, different data types here, right? And let's try to change the content of these variables or these data types here. So I'm going to create a new cell here. And I will say, okay, for um okay, let's let's start with my string now. Let's start with string. So for string now, I want to change um let's say I made a mistake in spelling this Python, right? I say I, I say I spelled it, I didn't put um I, I put, let's say, double H here instead of T. Then I want to change this particular letter here. I want to change this particular letter here. It would not allow me to do that because string objects or string data types are immutable by default. So what, before, before we go into that one, I just want to quickly introduce what we call indexing. So each, especially this list, tuple, dictionary, and set, sorry, set, tuple, and list, dictionary excluded, these three are indexed. Let me come here. List is indexed, tuple is indexed, and set is indexed, right? My string also is indexed. So what does indexed mean? Index is basically giving numbers to the sequence in that particular data. So in this my string, the sequence here are the letters. So P is a, is a, is a sequence, Y is a sequence, H is a sequence, the second H is a sequence, and so on and so forth, the last one. So each of them, they have a particular number. So Python starts indexing from zero. So I'll come here and say markdown and say, Python indexing starts from zero, right? So basically, this is something you need to know and keep at the back of your mind. So if I call any of these variable, I can call my string. A way to index or assess the sequences is to use um, this square bracket after you call the variable. So after you've called the variable, you will now pass a bracket, a square bracket, and then indicate the number that you want to index or that you want to assess. So if we count from here, 
we can say P here is zero, is giving the index zero, Y is giving the index one, H here is giving the index two, the second H three, this one four, and this one five, and so on. For my list, the first um, item here is zero, second item here is one, third item here is two, fourth item here is three. So that is how it is arranged in Python. So for all these ones I mentioned, my set, tuple, list, and um, string, they are all indexed. So if I come here and say two, right, you see I'm going to get an output here. You can see the output I'm getting. T, T is what? Zero, okay, I need to run this again. I'll come here and say, you can see um, H is here two. So P here is zero, Y is one, H is what? Two, right? So that's why when we index two, the second index here, it gave us H. If we say zero, it will give us the first letter. That is the first sequence in this index. So that is the way Python arranges these sequences in the memory. So we can easily assess a particular value. So now when changing something or changing a particular value, we can't do that for string. So how we change or um, let's say, yeah, replace a value is by calling a particular index, right? And then assigning the new letter you want to assign to it and just um, typing the equal to write this is the assignment operator and then indicating or putting the new letter you want to assign. So you want to like replace the H here with T, right? That is this one because we misspelled it. So if we come here and um, and we do and we do this assignment stuff, it's going to give us an error, right? So if you read the error, the error is what string object does not support item assignment. Basically, it is immutable. Right, it is. It cannot change it. Once you've created it, you've created it. You cannot do anything again. So let's just look at um, some other data types here. The same thing for um, the same thing for for tuple. So tuple. Now we have my tuple. My tuple. Okay, I'm going to ask us a question now to know if we are following. I want to assess this 54 here. What? What is the index I'm going to indicate in this bracket? I want to assess this 54, this value here. How am I going to put it here? What is the value I'm going to put here? Two, right? So I'm going to put two there, right? And I'm going to run it. You can see that it will give me 54, right? So if I come here and let's say I want to change this 54 to 30, like let's say I made a mistake, I'll come here and say this particular value index equal to what, 30, and I run it. It's going to give me an error too. Tuple object does not support item assignment, right? So you can see that clearly. Now, the same thing for, okay, basically we've, me we've mentioned string, tuple, and float, basically. So you can actually index um, integers and float, right? So practically you can't change it. If you want to change it, you just have to reassign a new value to that particular um, variable. So that's why we, don't, we didn't talk about integer and float, right? So we are talking about these sequences. So these are the sequences that we have, the data types that are of sequence that we can index. So the ones that are mutable are my lists, dictionary, and set. So let's look at an example. So I can come here and say my lists, and now let's say um, index the second element there, that is 43. I'll say 40, 43, right? No, sorry, um, it should be what? One, right? And I'll say I want to change 43 to let's say 78. If I run this, I'm not going to get any error, right? If I come here and now print out my, my list, I'll come and say my list. You can see that the, sum, the number here has changed to what, 78. Are we following? Can we see how these different data types are acting differently? That is why we have different data types because they have different characteristics, different ways they behave. So we can actually change the element of our list, but we can't do that for tuple. We can't do that for string. 
So we can do that for um, list, we can do that for dictionary, and we can do that for set. So the same thing, you can just come and say my set, right? Um, so let's let's start with dict. So for dictionary, it's the approach is actually different because it is not indexed directly, right? We have key value pairs here. So if you want to index a particular value here, you should have to use the key that we have here. Right, you are going to have to use the key. So let's say you want to assess the name, you just have to come here and say dictionary name. Right, we're going to have this here. You see, it is giving us. Let me print my you can see you can see that we are not having any output. So I can just come here and say print my dict. So you can see it has printed Emmanuel for us here, right? So if I come and say I want to access the country, so this is how we access the different values in dictionary. We don't use numbers, right? Because the dictionary, they have the keys here. So these keys are actually the index, right? So they don't have the zero, one, two, three index that we have for the other ones here, right? So um, um, we basically have seen that already so let's see let's see okay so now we have the other which one have we not looked at here so hope we are following hope everybody is following with this let me get a reaction in the group chat Let me get the reaction to ensure that everyone is following along. All right, all right, great. So let's move on. We actually would be stopping any moment from now. Okay, I think we've not talked about set. So set is actually quite unique. Now, um, set is actually what we call an unordered. Um, it is unordered, basically. That means it does not have a particular order. The values in this set are not indexed. Unlike list, tuple, and tuple, and string, the values in a set are not indexed. So you cannot actually use the normal indexing that we have to assess elements in a set. Understand? So the only the way the only way to do that is to use functions that are built in, and we are not going to discuss that today. So we are going to have time when we are going to discuss all this, which is going to be in the next class because of time. So just keep that at the back of your mind. So let me just give you an illustration. If I come here and I say uh, my set and I say zero, right? You are going to have an error. The error is going to be sort this English, right? The English is basically telling you that it does not support indexing. That means the elements here, which is 34, 43, they are not arranged, right? Indexing actually is what arranged arranges the elements we have in that particular list. But a set is not ordered, so it does not have an index. So there's a different method of doing that. We can use a different set method like add and the rest. So but that's how the scope of what we are doing today. So just get all the um, other ones we've talked about and um, understand them. So let's move forward. Let's move forward. So we talked about mutability. Now we'll talk about type conversion. But before we talk about type conversion, I'll quickly once okay let's quickly talk about type conversion so in we have what we call type conversion type conversion basically is converting a data type from one data type to another converting a data type to another data type that is what that is what it is basically right so 
we can have um we can come here we have an integer here come here and say my int if i say type my int right i'm going to get what integer if i say type my float i'm going to get float but if i want to convert this my integer to float i can use a function called float right it comes with bracket remember all functions come with open and closing bracket so the parameter the value i put inside this bracket is the integer i want to convert to float so i have the variable here already my int so if i run it you are see i'm going to get 56.0 remember the integer is 56 right so what this function will do is just add zero to it so it makes it a decimal number basically i can also convert my float to integer by using the int, int function, I'll put my float into it, and then we're going to have um, 56, right? So it takes in this 50. Okay, let me change it to something else. It's not confuse us. It's 8.67. So it gave me a whole number. So this function converted the decimal number to a whole number, but it doesn't approximate, right? You just remove the decimal part of it and give us the whole number. So this is a way to convert between variables. So we can convert from integers to um to float to right. So we can convert integers to string. So I can come here and say string and put my integer right. And I will now have. You can see that it has quotes surrounding it now. Right, it quote surrounded this 56. So it has converted it to an integer. I can say string my floats. Right, you can see it just put a string around it. So it basically converted it from one data type to another. So I can convert, let's say, from tuple to list. Right, I can convert from okay, let me come here. I can convert from set to list too. So I can come and say, um, list. And say my two pool, right? I'm going to make this um this stuff different. So let me so that you know that it's the two pool that we're working with. I'll run this. I'll come here. You can see now that this two pool that is here now we converted it to a list. You can see that it has square brackets at the beginning and at the end, right? So we can also convert a set. Let's come here to list. I come and say my set. You can see it has converted this set that we have here. Um, okay, let's, it has converted this set here to, to this. You understand? So now you can see what happened here. Like this set now, the order has changed, right? Basically, what happens is that as we're converting it from a set to a list, Python now index the value. So there is um there, there was a change that was made. You can see what's what it started with here was 34, but what it is starting with here is 56. You understand? So that should tell you that the set here is scattered. My screen has paused. Can you can everyone hear me? Oh, okay. Let me start sharing again. All right, can you see my screen now? Yeah, all right, great. So let's just continue. So this is just how to convert between data types, right? You can actually convert between data types. So we have here integer to float, float to integer, string to integer, string to float, integer to string, float to string, list to set, string to list, integer list to string list. So these are the basic conversions that we have here, right? So you can just try them out and just play around with them to see what you can do with the conversion method. So we have the different functions there that we've, um, we've shown you. 
right so that is just it i'm trying to like um just round up because um my system is just about to go down uh, i don't know why why this nipper people haven't given us like yeah so um so now let's quickly look at what we have here we have talked about the print statement so i've talked about the print statement and what it can do so it's basically there to print out the value that you put in the function so whatever value you put there it prints it out for you so there is what we need to discuss before we end this class which is comments very very important comments and doc strings right but we're just going to look at comments for today and doc string we're going to um, um if there is an, still enough time we'll still look at it right but now comment is actually a way to explain your code so remember i've been i did it intentionally i've been writing code all this while it's just code 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 that we're having here we didn't have any comments so comment is a part of your python syntax that explains your code to the person reading it so get this the code is for the computer why the comment is for the person right python does not interpret the comment because it is a comment it is for the, um, the um, people that are reading the code so they understand what exactly you are doing so i'm going to now start showing you how to use comment so the syntax for comment is an hashtag you start a comment with an hashtag so in a code block or in a cell once you type an hashtag python automatically knows that you want to write a comment so everything that follows that code is going to be a comment so it will not be executed while running your code so i can just come here and say this is um um basic program in python right so you can see i've given a comment here so this comment is talking about this print hello world so this hello world here i said is a basic program in python so i've explained what it means so you can see it here if i run this python will not recognize this particular text i've written here but if i do not put this hashtag here if i just write it like this plain it's going to give me an error you understand because python is now looking at this text and trying to understand what code you are trying to write but if i come here and put hashtag it's going to like um um, um comment it out so the interpreter doesn't read it as a code so i can come here and do the same thing i will say my first function you can see i've given a comment here right so you can see if you are reading this it will start making sense to you you can read the comment and it will help you understand what the code is all about right so i can come here and say i can write the comment on top i can also write it by the side so as long as you start with an hashtag so i'll put an hash here and then i'll say this is an integer integer come here and say this this is a float come here and say this is a string you understand so i can just do the comment for everything i'll say this is a string so if i run this python will not run this anything that follows this comment it is not going to execute it anything that follows this hashtag is a comment so python will not execute it so if i remove this comment here and run it's going to give me an error because it's trying to read this text that i write here to understand the code that i'm trying to write so just take note of that um you are going to be using comments um, um throughout your coding exercises and your assignments um in this program so it's very very important that you know that so a very a good shortcut to comment out your code is control slash so let me just put it here control so i'm going to make it good control plus slash that is forward slash right so if i come to this um particular code i've written here now and i put my cursor on any line 
and I and I click control um, slash, it's going to automatically comment out that code. You can see now that this dictionary that I created has been commented out. It has included a, an adjunct there, right? If I come again and just type control slash forward slash, it un, it uncomments the code, right? So that is just a very quick way to comment the code. Sometimes you might be running a cell and you don't want to run a particular line of code. So you can just comment it out quickly. You can just comment this one out and run it, right? So to see, just to test some things. So in the, in the case of um, this error we have here, this set, so to like, let's say I um, want to comment out this code that's given us this error, I can just come to this place here, put my cursor there and say control, type control forward slash. It will comment this particular code. So if I run this um, cell again, it's not going to execute this particular code here. It is seen it as a comment, right? So this is exactly what we use comment for in Python, right? It is very, very useful and um, you'll be using it most of the time. And I'm going to um, require that you use it in your assignment, right? So to explain what you are doing in your code. So it can just be a very short explanation. Or you can just come here and say, printing the various, or printing the variables. I use a comment. So the comment is explaining what you are doing in this code. So we are printing out these different variables. So that is what you are trying to comment there, right? So that is just it about comment. So the other ones we have, the um, thing we have here is a doc string. So a doc string is quite different. It is like a comment, but it is used for functions. So once we get to functions, we are going to talk about that, right? But the syntax for that is um, triple quotes, as we have here. Right? You can see we have triple quotes here. So let me just quickly illustrate that here. So this is a function I defined here. I can come here before I start writing the code under the function. I can just explain what the function does by using doc string. So to use a doc string, I'll come and put one, two, three. I can use single quotes, but I can use double quotes, right? So make sure it is three. You put three, and then um, you're going to put the remaining three. You can just, and then type anything you want to type in between. So anything that you type in between would not be executed, but it is going to be captured actually in Python as the explanation for this function. So if I come here and say, this is, a very simple function that does nothing. So you might be tempted to see this as a comment, but this is not, not a comment. A comment is not recognized by Python, but a doc string is recognized, but it's not executed basically. So this function now, once you create this function, it is going to register this doc string as the explanation for this function. So if I come here and run this function and I, there is a, um, um, there's a, uh, there's what we can use to access the doc string. So don't um, um, get confused about this, right? Just follow me. As we are proceeding, we are going to deal with functions exhaustively. So I just want to explain all these things, right? So you are going to understand how to use them especially the comments, right? So you can just access the doc, right? By using this doc um, function here, sorry. So you come here and say print. Do so you see that it has given us the doc string that we put in this particular um, function, right? So Python is noting what you wrote here and storing it as part of the function. So in some cases, when you want to create a very complex function, right, you need to explain what that function is doing. So when someone is using that function, they can just quickly use this doc fun um, 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 this syntax that I just did for you to understand it. So if you do this, it's going to explain what that function is doing and you understand it and you can now proceed with whatever it is you're doing, right? So, so this is this is basically Python basics. These are the things that 
you need to know to start working with Python. So we've talked about a lot of things today. We've talked about um, variables. We've talked about data types. We've talked about the different data types we have. We've talked about mutable and immutable data types, right? We've talked about how to convert from one data type to another data type, right? We've talked about, um, for just so you know, there are some data types that um, if you try converting from, let's say, during the conversion, let's say you want to convert, um, you want to convert, okay, let's see. All right, so if you want to convert the dictionary, I didn't specify this already. What happens is that the list function just extracts just the value from the dictionary and assign each of the values to a list, as you can see here. So you can see it converted the dictionary to a list. So it removes the key and left us with the values, right? They want to convert a dictionary, a list to a dictionary. You see that, um, okay, let me see, put this. You see that it gives us an error. Cannot convert dictionary sequence, blah, 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 to a sequence. So converting from a dictionary to another sequence is almost not going to happen. Like you can actually do that, but you can convert from a dictionary to other sequences, like a list um, and tuple and, and a set, right? So this is just the things you need to know. These are just basic stuff in Python. Um, I understand it might be overwhelming for you now, but trust me, you are going to you are going to get very comfortable with it as you practice. So the recording for this class will be made available this night or tomorrow morning latest, right? For your assignment, you are going to get it them this night, so you can start um, as early as you can to start um, attempting them and everything. So make sure that you practice all these things we've done today, right? practice everything, um, go over the video again. This material is already available for us in the um, Google Classroom. I'm going to make it available on the Telegram channel. I think it's already on the Telegram channel, the material resources group. So please just go over them, practice them, look at the examples that we have here, just play around and see what you can do, right? So um, it's impossible to capture every single example or instance of what we've talked about today. But on your own, try and go the extra mile so you can gain that better understanding. So um, I believe we've been able to just capture the basics. Trust me, this, this is just the basics. Like we're actually going to build on this in the next class. So ensure that you already understand all everything we've done today. If you don't, it's going to be difficult for you to follow up in the next class. right? So if, let's say, you didn't really follow with everything we did in this class, it's fine. Just make sure you go over this video. Like once it is out, go over it again and practice and everything. Trust me, you're going to get it. You're definitely going to get it. You can ask questions in the classroom. Um, your classmates would respond to you, I believe. And if I see any, just drop your questions on the Q&A group chat. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to take live questions today, right? I'm not be, I will not be able to take live questions. Uh, I'm going to be answering your questions through the um, um, Telegram um, Q&A group. Um, I, please pardon me for that. We actually do take questions, right? Um, but for a particular reason that is um, beyond my power at the moment, I can't actually take any question because I have to end this class um, right about now. So any question you have, please you drop it in the Q&A session. Trust me, I'm going to definitely attend to every question, every single question. Just drop your question and tag me. Drop your question and tag me. I'm going to respond to them. Either I or Mr. David will be um, um, attending to those questions. So yeah, we've come to the end of this class. Um, let's just go over what we did today. So basically, we looked at Python overview. We looked at the definition of Python, everything about the, the class syntax. You can see from what we've done, the different syntax um, in Python. And now we can write some Python code. Um, looked at the importance and application of Python in different industries. Looked at the syntax and indentation in Python. Also looked at variables and data types. 
looked at how to convert common data type to another, we looked at print statements, and we looked at comment and doc string. Right, so um, please try to revise this. Um, we are going to be continuing from arithmetic operations in the next class, so as not to overwhelm you today, we are just going to be stopping here, continuing from there in the next class. Please and please try and go over these materials and go over this class recording. That is why we are recording it for you, right? So um, before we call it a day, there is a particular material that I dropped in the Google Classroom. So I'm going to be sharing my screen quickly. So there's a particular material, as you can see on the screen, this is um, a Python textbook that I dropped in the Google Classroom. If you go to the Google Classroom, you're going to see it there. This is the Python Data Science Handbook. This is what you're going to be using as a reference for everything we'll be doing. So please, just read this. The same way courses have their recommended textbooks, this particular program is using this as its recommended textbook. So everything you need to know is here. So if you go scroll down, you are going to have see the different, um, the outline basically and everything. So you're going to get, um, is, is very, uh, it's actually very elaborate. Everything you need to know about Python and the different, um, um, as we are going, as we are progressing, we are going to be introducing new things to you, and you can also get them from this particular textbook. Um, sometimes uh, you might have a lot of very unnecessary information here that you might not need. So just look at the ones that we've done in class and just um, 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 check them out in this textbook so to give you a better understanding, right? So there is another textbook I, 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 I dropped in the classroom too. I don't have that here at the moment, but that one is more easy to read. It is easier to follow up with, right? So that gives you actually an understanding on some of this Python concept that we've talked about. So um, check the Google Classroom. Please, I've added everybody that put their name on that list on the in the classroom. So if you've not um, joined yet, check your email, check your email, check your spam, check everything to ensure that uh, um, to, 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 to ensure that you've not missed the invitation. Everybody that has a name on that list has been added to the Google Classroom, right? So, so that is going to be it for today. Um, next week, we are going to be going, um, continuing from where we stopped today, right? So I hope you all um, enjoyed this class and I hope you got one or two from the class. Um, um, actually, Okay, yeah, so I hope you, you're able to pick one or two from the class. So what I usually do is at the end of my class, I would ask every single person to drop at least two things they learned from the class in the group chat. So as we are going to be ending this class, I want to see uh, I want to see the things you've learned from this class. Just to, just few points, anything whatsoever. It might be one line or what have you, right? I just want to know what you've been able to learn from the class. I'll be going um, through the messages and just taking note of them and um, just reacting to everything. So I just want us to interact on and off the class. So that's going to be it for this class. Um, please don't forget to drop your questions in the Google, um, in the group chat, the Q&A group chat. I'm going to be attending to every single one of them and also drop what you've learned um, in this particular um class yeah so we've come to the end of this session thank you very much and um enjoy the rest of your day